Having a calendar table in Power BI is essential to perform time intelligence calculations such as total sales by year, month, quarter, fiscal period, same period last year, cumulative running total, total YTD, and so on. In this video, I'm going to show us how we can use the add columns DAX function to generate a calendar table that's going to include the fiscal quarter, fiscal year, and the fiscal period. So let's get started. In my sample model, I've got this star schema with one fact table and surrounding several dimension table in a one to many relationships. I'm going to click on table view and in the calculations group, I'm going to click on new table. And in the formula, I'm going to give this one the date, that is the dimension table for date and a equals. Now, in order to make our code readable, we're going to indent. So I'm going to press on the keyboard Alt, Enter, and then press the tab key to select the add columns DAX function. This is going to return a table with new columns specified by the DAX expression. And of course, this requires a table as the first argument, and then the name one, expression one, name two, expression two, and so on. Now, I'm going to hold enter and then for the table, I'm going to call the calendar function. Now, the calendar returns a table with one column of all dates between the specified start and end date. And for the start date, I'm going to press hold enter and then I'm going to use the function called the main that is going to return the oldest date from a date column specified in my F transaction fact table. So, I'm going to go ahead and type the order date and I'm going to see that in the F transaction table and close the main for, for now. Put in a comma or enter. Now, for the end date, I'm going to use the max function that's going to return the latest date from the order date from my fact table. So, order date and then close the bracket and I can go on and press alt enter and backspace close the bracket for the calendar put in a comma alt enter and backspace and then for the name one now we want to go ahead and generate our columns first we want to generate the year column so inside double code I'm going to call this one the year or let me just go back and tab key so inside double code the year all right, and then put in the comma. Now, for the expression one, I'm going to use the year function that returns the year from a date. So I'm going to go ahead and press the square bracket and press the tab key, close the bracket, put in the comma, alt, enter. And then for the name two, I'm going to extract the month name. So inside of the I'm going to type in month, comma, and I'm going to use the format function to achieve this. So for the value argument, I'm going to call the date column, comma, and then for the format, it's a double quote, I need four M's. This is going to give me the full month name and comma, close the bracket and press enter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and establish relationship between the dimension table and the fact table. So I'm going to drag this across and connect to the order date in the fact table and then click on save. Now I can go to the report view. Now in the report view, I'm gonna go ahead and drag the month into the field. Now this is gonna give me an alphabetical ordering of the month name. Now this is actually not what I'm looking for. We need the chronological ordering that is January to December, not April to September. So I'm gonna come back to the table view and then I can Go on and create a helper column. So backspace, comma, alt, enter. I'm going to call this one inside double quote month number and close the double quote comma. And I'm going to use the month function. It's going to give me 1 to 12 representing January to December. And then I'm going to open the square bracket, select the date column, close that up. And then I can go on and close the bracket for now. Press enter. And it's going to give me an additional column. I can select the month column and then in the column tools contextual ribbon tab i can click on the sort by column and i want to sort by the month number and when i come to my report there we go so we have the chronological ordering of the month name amazing let's go back to the table and then let's go ahead and continue backspace comma hold enter now i want to generate the weekday so inside double quote i'm going to type in weekday and then I can put in a comma. So for this, I'm going to use the same logic, the format function, and then for the value, I'm going to select a column, comma, and for the expression, it's a double quote for this, representing the full week name. And then I can close the bracket for now and put in a comma. And of course, we also need an additional helper column that's going to sort the week, day, 
in chronological order. So I'm going to call this one a week number, close that and comma, and I'm going to use the week date function. And then for the date, I'm going to select the month, the date column, and then I'm going to specify the return type two representing the Monday to Sunday. Close the bracket, and of course, I can just continue putting the comma, alt, enter. That's fine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and generate the standard quarter. So Inside the double quarter, I'm going to call this one quarter and then put in a comma. And I can use the amazing quarter function and I can call the date column, close that up, comma, or enter. Now, we want to go ahead and generate the fiscal quarter. Now, I'm going to assume that the fiscal year is going to start on in April and then terminate in the month of March of the following year. It's just going to overlap into another year. So, I'm going to type the name and call this one fiscal quarter and then close that all comma and i'm going to use the a function basically the a function checks whether a logical test is true and returns true and false if the logical test is true or not true as the case may be so i'm going to type in the a function and then for the logical test now i want to check the standard quarter by calling this quarter function so i want to check that on top of the date column so i want to check whether this, this is equal to one that's if this is equal to the standard quarter one so if this logical test is true then i want to return four that's give me four that is april comma and if the logical test is false i'm going to go ahead and call the same quarter function on top of the date column then close that all and i want to behave just give me one quarter in the past previously so this will be minus one okay i can close the bracket and then put in a comma and alt enter now i want to generate the fiscal year so for the fiscal year the same logic works i can just because of time copy this part of the code all right control c and control v and for the value true now i'm going to go ahead and call the year function so i'm going to type in the year function and then on top of the dates and then close the bracket so i'm going to do hey if this logical test is true then give me the current year minus one comma but if this is false and then i just want to return the current year and access the date column and then close the bracket twice and then put in a comma so this is going to be our fiscal quarter and then the fiscal year okay so we want to go ahead and create what's called the fiscal period this is going to be the concatenation of the fiscal quarter and then the fiscal year with just a placeholder label so alt enter it's a double i'm going to call this one fiscal year close that up comma and then I'm going to type inside double code Q. It's just going to be a placeholder label. And I'm going to ampersand that with the code for the fiscal quarter. So I'm going to copy all these and come here and come to the. And then I want to go ahead and use an ampersand. And I need an iPhone. So inside double code iPhone, close that up. And then another ampersand. And I can copy the code for the fiscal um year and control v to paste okay so this is basically what i need for the fiscal uh sorry fiscal period this is not fiscal year it's going to be fiscal period okay so i can for now alt enter backspace close the add columns press enter so this is going to give me all these columns so i'm going to come here and sort my data ascending so it's going to give me the record starting on the 9th of January 2014 up to 31st of December 2017. So we have the year, the month, and so on. And then we can see we have the standard quarter, and then we have the fiscal quarter, and then we have the fiscal year, and then the fiscal period, which is super cool. Now, when I come to the report view, let me just delete this. I'm going to go ahead and drag the fiscal period onto the canvas. Let's see. And this is going to give me a alphabetical ordering of the fiscal period such as the q1 of 2014 q2 of 2015 q q1 of 2015 q1 of 2016 and so on now this is actually not what i'm looking for i want to see the q1 q2 q3 of 2014 q1 q2 and so on and so forth so i'm going to go back and create an additional helper column so i'm going to backspace or okay close that or comma or let's enter and i'm going to call this one inside the good fiscal period result and then close that up comma and for this i'm going to use a function called the value function now for the value function i want to take the fiscal year first so control c this control v and i want to ampersand that with the fiscal quarter code i'm going to come here and copy this code and come here and control v 
and then I can close the value function. Okay, now the value is going to convert the text into actual number. Okay, so I can go and press Control Enter. This is going to give me additional column. So I've got the 2013 four. That is the fiscal year concatenated with the fiscal quarter and so on. So I can go and select the fiscal period and then in the column tools, we're going to sort by the fiscal period sort. So when I come back to report, yes, now this is going to give me exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to say the Q4 of 2013 because our data start from the April of 2014. So I'm going to say the Q1 of 2014, the Q2 of 2014, Q3 of 2014, and then I can say the Q for of 24 and then we're gonna have the Q1 of 2015, Q2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm looking for. And now I'm just gonna quickly use the unit field in my factory. This is gonna give give us an implicit measure, no problems. So when I just drag this across, there we go. So I can turn this or control C, Ctrl V to create a duplicate. All right, and I can turn this to a table. All right, so there we go. So we have the sum of units by fiscal period. So when I come back to my table, I can see we have all of this code. So this is how we can generate using the add columns that function a full fledged calendar table that's going to include the fiscal quarter, fiscal year, fiscal period, and the fiscal period so so i hope you did this video if you do like share with your friends comment and follow me for more videos thank you for watching bye for now